So hi again and welcome to The Humble Pie. Really happy to uh, be with you today to speak to a good friend of mine, uh, Vincent Raffray, who's the founder of The Future Collective. Um, and we're going to talk about a couple of different things today that I'm really, really excited about. Uh, in particular, blockchain, crypto, the future of work, and some of the other areas of interest that I know uh, are busy tickling um, Vincent's fancy at the moment. So, uh, yeah, thanks thanks for jumping on uh, the humble pie today, Vincent. Yeah, so, yeah, awesome. So, um in, in terms of your work and kind of, uh, you know, you run the future collective uh do you want to just sort of give me a quick introduction or give our listeners a quick introduction on uh you know what that is what you do and i suppose also coming out of the background that i know you used to have in the creative agency space where you ran and built your own you know agency empire uh, all over the world um you know what kind of led you to creating this this new sort of future focused business and what you do yeah that felt like that's felt like quite a while ago um, mm-hmm. running that empire um, but yeah I mean my my background is in advertising as a creative director and rightly so I was I spent 10 years in the Middle East building that ad agency and um, when I realized that sort of the, the advertising industry was changing drastically and it was moving into these sorry man sorry. that's okay no worries you just pick it up when you're ready yeah um you know, when i when i when i realized that uh the advertising industry was changing drastically because of the way technology was changing the way um you know communication was changing the way the uh, consumer was changing you know these things were becoming more and more fragmented uh, as we were going and I think one of the things that I wanted to get more involved with was the strategic aspect of communication and how to really connect with people because it wasn't necessary creating a nice advertising campaign that would necessarily solve a business problem or a culture within that business or um, if your product was irrelevant. Right. So I wanted to get more into the strategic space of helping sort of brands and businesses navigate the change, you know, become a, a, a business that was aware, have products and services that were relevant to their audience. And then once they understood everything to communicate in an effective manner. You know, and advertising agencies weren't set up to kind of do all of that. And yeah, that's how yeah. Future Collective was born. And, you know, it was hard to pigeonhole us in the beginning because people wanted to know whether we were an ad agency or whether we were a consultancy or a production house. Like it was all of those things combined, you know. Um, we were looking for like more of a holistic view on the issues that businesses faced and communication was one of them having a proper corporate culture was another um, helping them stay relevant through producing trend reports on their industry was another aspect so all these things upskilling their staff you know all these things sort of help to contribute to the success of a business you can't have one without the other and that's essentially what, what Future Collective does. We help companies navigate the change. We help them be relevant in their product, service, or packaging. We help them build an authentic culture so their, their, their narrative or whatever they're trying to communicate comes across authentically from their view. Mm. And uh, build awareness with them, you know, to try and say, look, this is what's happening in the world. This is how it's changing this is how you should position yourself for for the future yeah it's i find it uh, i resonate with so much um, that you just said now i find it interesting that um you know we we all have an interest in the future obviously but i suppose specifically with with businesses um who are constantly needing needing to meet the demand of of you know where customers are at and how to try and predict where that might go and the trends that they need to follow 
in order to stay relevant. That that seems to be an increasingly difficult, but at the same time, busy space to be working in. Um, you know, it's it's it's, and it seems to also ha- be loaded with contradictions. The kind of thing that is impossible to forecast, but yet there's loads of trends to see, and so on and so on. So, uh, um, how, how have you found it working? with businesses or anybody really when you're trying to essentially help them to see or to think about something that isn't there yet um you know is it is it trying to encourage them on a journey of imagination is it trying to sort of get them to you know appeal to their sense of greed how how do you, how do you do it how do you sort of direct that process well it, it's it's a combination of two you know it it, it does appear to well a sense of greed is a bit harsh, you know, but I mean, we, we're helping businesses make money at the end of the day, you know, yeah. and what businesses are starting to realize that by, you know, doing good and being a good business, for lack of a better word, is good business, you yeah. know, it's what people want, it's what the world needs, and in that sort of angle you know the money is you know if you if you go about a certain way and if you try and um, do something good the money will come but in saying that how do you convince them of a certain direction and you know we we live in a hyper connected world so we've got that information at our fingertips and there's a lot of very smart companies you know, going in certain directions and paving the way for others to follow. And you share some of these insights with them, you show them, you, you almost build a picture of, of what the world might look like and how they can position themselves like this. But if they say, oh, but we've always done it this way. And I mean, they tend to see that things are shifting and that they need to do something, you know. It's easier now, like in the last few years than it was a while back because a while back the change was a bit slower but now with the pandemic and that you know the 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 change seems to be exponential you know we've adapted to new technologies very quickly Um, we're working very differently and there's all these sort of aspects around us in this day and age that are increasing that rate of change so they're more Mm. likely to buy, you know, um, a new trend or a new way of doing things simply because they don't have another choice, you know. Right, right. Eat or be eaten. Um, And it's interesting what you say about technology and how that has just sort of totally upset or, um, you know, rethought economies of scale and made things scalable and sped up the change um, of how society works and how customers interact and everything else. I suppose one of the most exciting areas where this is happening at an insane rate is the sort of blockchain um, and, and I suppose also related to you know the cryptocurrency world as well. Even though, and, and, and it's interesting because I think that it at the moment is clearly very early in this space because you know it's still dominated by internet fanboys and so on <laughs> and before you know you have that you know greater adoption curve you know c- coming on but at the same time there's a great deal of interest in the various applications of blockchain and how that could keep on transforming the world how so i, I know that you're excited about this space and so w- maybe there's a couple things that you could sort of look at from the top of your list what are the things that you're most excited about for blockchain it- it's a massive, massive topic and a massive subject, but it's a great example of how, you know, with the current state of affairs, how we're starting to see cracks appear in our economy, in our environment, and all these things that we talk about, but nothing seems to be done about it, you know. and. Blockchain, in a sense, removes the centralization of services, um, you know, and make them more decentralized, you know, so it removes that middleman and it, it allows technology to create trust between, you know, two parties. So instead of, for example, uh, having a middleman like a, a broker or a bank or a government, you know, you... You create that trust through technology. 
you know, it's decentralized, it's censorship resistant, it's very secure. I mean, the, the, the way the technology works, it's, you know, you cannot hack it. And um, it's transparent and traceable, you know, every transaction or thing done on the blockchain can be seen and um, by anyone, you know, so the idea of this technology helping to solve many of the world's problems is very much a reality because as we speak, I know a lot of people are new to blockchain, but as we speak, there's been a lot of progress in the last few years with applications being built on these different blockchains. And if you can imagine it mm. like the evolution of the internet, so you've got this internet with all these websites on it and you know this commerce going around. It's exactly like that with blockchain without the central entities controlling, without the Googles or the Facebooks or the, you know, the central entities controlling. Uh, taking your data or, um, you know, using your data to sell communication advertising to you. So you know, on, on that, it, it, it's yeah. an interesting one, especially around the, um, the, the centralization and the entities who, it almost feels like it's a response to, or at least our gradual waking up to a lot of these entities, so, you know, being in positions where they abuse and misuse what they do with our data simply because that you know it's just grown so much they've kind of swollen in size and power because they've got so much data they've got so much access to a limitless amount of records and what happens to the point where they can personalize almost everything and so there's a great deal of power that they wield and i suppose that's the real one of the massive um applications but also appeals of blockchain is that it it takes all of that out of it it doesn't sort of you know, empower anybody really, because the whole thing is based on maybe it's worth just having a, a basic definition for some of the listeners is, you know, how blockchain actually works. Um, because as, as far as I understand it, it's about that sort of network of verifying, um, you know, certain transactions or what happens on a cryptographic code level in order for that to then, you know, be, be, be sort of put onto the block or that, you know, that's, that's essentially what blockchain mining is, isn't it? Well, Again, so there's, <laughs> it can get very technical, <laughs> but to keep it very simple, you know, you, you're comp you, you're basically comparing it to a ledger, you know, so you, 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 you're making sure that if there's one transaction from one party to the, the other, that transaction is... Um, encoded into the ledger so that transaction is there and it's on every block on every node in the system so every computer let's say that makes up this network has the same information on that computer uh, as it is on all the computers that make that blockchain right so my transaction let's say i send you a transaction that transaction is noted on the blockchain for you to see, me to see, and everybody to see. They might not know that this address belongs to this person, but you can see the transactions uh, right. clearly. And in the same way, you can do that with contracts between two parties or two entities. So you can have an agreement that if something, if I do something and you do something, something else will happen. And that contract is programmed and coded on the blockchain and you know, whatever needs to come out of that contract is controlled via the blockchain. So it's, in essence, creates that trust between two parties. So if I now say, okay, I want to put my money into a bank, or I want to get my insurance from this person, or I want to buy a house from this person, all those are contractual exchanges, basically. You know, mm. I sign a contract, I pay the money, and I get the house transferred in my name. And you've got these central entities managing that process. Mm. And now with technology, you know, you can do this through technology. And also, it's a lot more secure and a lot more trustful because, you know, I'm relying on technology and not a human being that might want to put, um, you know, other things within the contract that I might not understand or, mm. you know, charge in 
access for their services or whatever other things that there are that costs a lot of money. If you think about like this bank charges that you pay, for example, every time you make a transfer and those little things and your, your yearly account fees and all these things are managed by that central entity. So in blockchain, you remove that central en- entity, that agreement is between you and a third party monitored by the, by the technology. And, um, you know, it's instant. And it, it mm. costs a lot less than it does doing it the normal way. And this application can be used in so many different ways. You know, if you know that information has been secured on the blockchain and there's a sense of trust there, I mean, you can use that in supply chain management. You could use it in voting, for example, like to make sure votes are, are, are all accounted for and that no one has voted twice and stuff. You can use it like or universities could use blockchain to um, verify certificates that or, or um, diplomas and things that they've given out, you know, because that's a huge problem around the world where half of um, these things are forged, you know, or fake. You know, mm-hmm. how many times have you heard in the news that some politician doesn't have their degree or something, you know, or fake their degree or didn't finish their things? So things like that, like if. If all these things were on the blockchain, you wouldn't need to worry that whether this information is true or not, or if you're getting it from a reliable source, because it's on the blockchain. And mm-hmm. that can include medical records and all sorts of things. And that's why this technology is, is so important and so exciting. So uh, it's interesting because you've, you've got all these amazing applications on the technology itself, but I think often... People, at least I, I certainly didn't for a long time. Um, you know, we don't always make the distinction between the technology and the potential for all these uses and uh, cryptocurrencies as a asset that people invest in and often end up making a lot of money or you know losing a lot of money on as well. And so it's easy to kind of conflate the two, whereas they're they're actually very different. And and I think often it seems that a lot of the the challenges with understanding blockchain or understanding the application um, might also stem from the fact that, you know, people make that, make that sort of, you know, they don't make that distinction between all of these things that you can do on the Ethereum network, on the Cardano network and so on, versus, you know, the price of Ethereum today. And if it's going to be, you know, going down 15% on the weekend, um, you know, so, so the volatility is, is an interesting sort of aspect or a, a characteristic of where it is right now, because it's still early and th- things are volatile when they're early. So, uh, look, it, it's, you know, first of all, I, I, instead of calling them cryptocurrencies, uh, I call them crypto assets because it immediately puts it into a different class. You know, when you talk about cryptocurrencies, people think they're buying these tokens or these coins and, you know, they, they don't understand mm-hmm. that each token or coin represents a company or an application on the blockchain. Absolutely. And if you, you can make the, the analogy with the in early days of the internet, you know, where you had this technology and this network and people didn't know quite how to monetize it, you know, because it was slow and you had to, you, you know, you had your dial up modem and it was like, if I told you back then that you could order your Uber and your Airbnb and do all these things online. You'd say, you're crazy. And I can't even download a JPEG. You know, it's so slow. So <laughs> the technology now for, for these blockchain technologies is very early on in the game. And you would probably heard people talk about Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies like Cardano and all these other blockchains. And... There are currencies, but they're not, you know, they, they like, they create value by tokenizing their offering. So, for example, mm. if I'm like using one of these applications, just like I'm using a website, for example, I get rewarded as the user for using that website through their token, you know. Instead of the money being distributed to a central entity, it's reallocated to the, the community. So, for example, there's a, an application called Filecoin or File, the file application. It basically works like a 
iCloud or Dropbox in the cloud, but it's decentralized and people that sort of, you know, they decentralize the, the storage capacity of whatever data is in there and the people that allow their storage, because we've all got a bit of space on our computers and that, that we could utilize to mine the file coins. So you would let them use your space and in return you would get rewarded with their token. So in, assess, in essence, they create these economies within these products, you know, and that's what you're investing in. So if you're investing in Ethereum, for example, you're investing in the future of that network and what's being built on top of that network. Mm. If you invest in a decentralized exchange on Ethereum, you're investing in that company that's, you know, providing liquidity to exchange tokens on a blockchain. So it's it, it's kind of you're investing in that in that business, and that's why people yeah. are speculating so much because we don't know which are the which are going to be the future Amazons or Facebooks or Googles of this blockchain. You know, we can start to speculate that certain companies are going in the right direction that are going to change the world, and those are the kind of companies that I look at at investing in, you know, and watching very closely. Because mm. they're the ones that are, for example, pushing the metaverse narrative, uh, which we can talk about just now, but or these NFT narratives or the DeFi, which is decentralized finance narrative. There's all these different things being created on the blockchain and, and, and use cases for people to try. And we don't know who's going to be the winner, you know. We, or maybe, they, maybe it'll be a combination of a lot of different blockchains becoming this sort of interconnected evolution of the internet you know yeah so um it's exciting. So i really like what you said around tokenizing the actual project uh, and that's a good way to see these cryptocurrencies um and certainly a great way to simplify anyone who's who's sort of starting their journey about learning um how this whole space works is that essentially you're not necessarily investing in a currency in the same way that you might be buying dollars or euros or pounds even though there can be the capacity for that like bitcoin which is a store of value and you can use bitcoin to transact and to trade and to exchange but really what what these guys do is they call it an ico don't they an initial coin offering and so cardano or solana or you know um, polygon or whatever they do they have a particular project that they are busy developing or in development on the blockchain uh, or on their own blockchain often. And what they do is in order to raise funds for what they're doing, they create a token that is essentially a token for their business and what it stands for and try to create a kind of an engaged investor community in what they do. And so, and so the more, just like traditional stocks work, the more you know progress they have, the more they can show for what they're doing, the higher that stock goes up, the more the coin is worth. And essentially, that is what gets exchanged. So I think that's a great way to see it. Essentially, these coins are tokens of what these companies are doing, rather than just a coin that you know you might, uh, you know, keep in your account. Yeah, I, I think the best example, like imagine Google. Okay, so Google, you've got Google Drive as a product of Google. You know, you got Google Search, you got Google Translate. So imagine every time you used Google Drive that you got rewarded in a Google Drive token, you know, that you mm. could swap for Bitcoin, okay? And let's say you want to store stuff on Google Drive, you had to pay in your Google token to store drive. So you pay using the Google Drive token and you get rewarded using the Google Drive token. So it's rewarding you for using the product and also you use the token to pay for the product. So that's how yeah. these blockchain sort of smart chain things, apps work, you know, as you mm. can see it like that. So imagine Cardano's little ecosystem with all its applications on it. So you've got like decentralized exchanges to exchange tokens from one project to another. You've got DeFi or decentralized finance applications where you can loan 
your crypto or borrow crypto or earn interest on your crypto or pool your crypto or stake your crypto or a million different things you can do with your crypto. You've got the gaming aspects and the NFT side of it. So you've got these blockchain games. I mean, this is fascinating. You've got like these blockchain games where within the game you can buy assets and earn assets by playing the game. And it's been such a successful model that one example is Axie Infinity, which is a blockchain game where you buy these little characters and you fight them against each other, almost like a, a like a card yeah. collector's game type thing. And you earn, for winning those games, you earn like a dollar or two dollars in their tokens, you know. And then it's so successful that you've got half of Asia, you know, jumping on this game because guys are making more money playing the game than they are in their actual jobs. <laughs> and then within the game, you've got these economies where you can loan your axes out to other players who can't afford to buy the axes on their own. So they loan mm. those and they pay a percentage of their earnings to the people that loan. So you can create passive income within the game. And there's many of these things popping up. You've got, so <laughs> that's why I would say it's such a, a vast topic with all yeah. these things happening that, yeah, I can give you examples yeah. for days. Well, um, it's, it's uh, I, I find it, um, I suppose it's to be expected, but at the moment there's obviously a big chasm um, with that speculation, you know, where things are uh, and the actual progress that a lot of these great projects, um, you know, are having right now versus, um, you know, where this the price is being speculated at for now. And that's what you do when you invest, right? You, you, you're, you're in buying into the future of that company and what things will be like at that point. So with that in mind, what do you think are some of the things that, let's say, everyday businesses, entrepreneurs, maybe bigger organizations, you know, people who are transacting, who are, you know, working with their clients, working on projects on an everyday basis? What do you think are some of the influences that are likely, that we're likely to see um, as a result of blockchain? I don't necessarily mean, you know, suddenly, uh, uh, you know, electricians are getting paid in Bitcoin necessarily, although I'm sure we'll see that. But what, what maybe some of the, the kind of the takeaways or some of the, the things that are here to stay because of the influence of blockchain technology or the influence of de decentralization and so on. And, and maybe if we are even seeing some of that already. So, yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's twofold. So the, the first one is, you know, companies that are investing into Bitcoin. So they're putting their balance sheets into Bitcoin instead of cash because, you know, the dollar is becoming deflationary. So a lot of them are putting their assets into crypto because they find Bitcoin a hedge against what's happening around the world. And that's the first way of doing it. And there's a lot of great companies like MicroStrategy that invested millions and mm. billions of dollars buying Bitcoin. And they're probably, it's going to be interesting to see where those type of companies get to. Because, I mean, if the numbers are right, I mean, they could be pretty happy in a, in a, in a few years' time. <laughs> you know? mm. But So that's the one side. But why is it interesting for businesses? Well, it's like, you know, even if we look at, sort of where we are today. So with technology like Zoom and all these other things that we've now become quite accustomed to because of the lockdown, it's helped us like become more okay with working this way, you know, mm. working remotely, working digitally like this. It's almost conditioning us to to be almost like this avatar of ourselves, you know, like everything that we do now seems to relate to digital in some way. So, the, the, you know, if, if, for example, if I want to flex digitally, that blue tick on my Twitter or Instagram, that, that means something to me, you know, mm -hmm. it, in the digital space, you know, that means that I'm important, you know. Great example. And you're starting to see how, how 
this space and how companies are involving themselves in the digital space is changing drastically. You know, and they're trying to get in, and they, some of them aren't getting right. So, for example, the advertisers on TikTok, for example, if you see an ad on TikTok, it's not going to work, mm. you know, because that's not what that audience is looking for. They're looking for authenticity. They, they'll buy from their friends, you know, and they'll buy from influencers, but they'll definitely not look at an ad. So as companies understand this digital landscape, they'll start to understand how blockchain sort of fits into that because it's one thing having a website and being digital as a company, but it's another thing using that, those tools to actually move your brand or your business forward in some direction. So the first thing mm. I would do is just be aware of blockchain space and for, as a business and, and what it means and, and how it's changing various industries. It's very easy to do. You can just research this. And then the next is to look at your own industry and see how blockchain has been utilized within your own industry, you know, because as we see with gaming, for example, and the way blockchain has changed gaming, it's going to change banking and finance. It's going to change insurance. It's going to change all those traditional avenues of, of doing business. You've got to think of it as, a, as an evolution of the internet. So just like you first had a website and then you know the, the mobile phone sort of took over, so you had to have an app. You know, now you, as a business, you're going to have to have all those things plus an understanding of how blockchain can help you, whether it's through within your working system of your business or whether it's by um, like using the technology. And I'll give you an example, like Louis Vuitton, for example, created a digital version of their bag, you know, that someone could utilize within a game or a metaverse of sorts, you know. And that bag got sold for more than the actual thing, you know. So you can start to see this, this jump into this digital realm. And, mm. you know, a lot of this is being driven by NFTs, um, which your audience might have heard of. These are non-fungible tokens or like, um, I mean, you can have... NFTs as, as images or music or piece of data. It's just a secured asset on the blockchain, very much like a token or a coin, you know, but it represents, you know, a piece of art or, or music or something like that. And just that space is, is huge. And I think that's what's going to cause mass adoption in the space because if you and me and everybody are living in these virtual worlds, Already on Zoom, you can change your background and you can, like, I see there's uh, plugins where you can have skins and stuff. So just take, a, take that a step further when everybody's wearing virtual goggles and interacting in these virtual environments. And I, can, I did one yesterday. There was a Cardano um, summit and it was a virtual summit. And the way you would enter, I actually send you the, the link for your viewers to have a look. You enter it as an avatar and you see you in this this world with waterfalls and you know I other it, people yeah. walking around and you've got the big stage there where you can see the speakers and you can just move around and, and they, they've added like gamification where you can collect little things around the place. You can talk to other people and connect and chat via voice or text. I mean, it's, it's just so interesting that you can attend a, uh, an event like that and this is going to happen with concerts with all sorts of things where the imagination will create these virtual worlds where we can interact not only play games but have meetings and you know work and and in that virtual world you're going to have all your brands and businesses doing the same thing they're doing in the real world you know you'll mm. you'll have a virtual starbucks where you can meet your friends in the starbucks and buy an NFT coffee or something, and it, it'll be done in a Starbucks, you know, because that's where the brand is. It's very much like when you're playing soccer, FIFA in, in games, they still advertise on those fields, mm -hmm. and those adverts mm -hmm. are still 
paid for ads inside the game. Mm. So you just, the medium's gonna change. You it's know, amazing so. how it, it, it's clearly gonna keep on changing behaviors and changing the way people not only work or live, but what they buy and how they spend their time, how they spend their free time. You know, instead of going, like you said, going to a Starbucks, they'd rather go to a digital one. And so part of that is probably accelerated, like you've said, with, uh, you know, what's happened over the last 18 months around the world. And so I think that's definitely a, a leveling force, you know, pushed everybody more into these digital spaces, these metaverses where it just makes sense and it's more convenient to interact digitally. But it also seems that, to me at least, that it poses a different question or maybe even a challenge to the concept of identity. Because uh, like you mentioned in that, in that conference that you attended, and, and I've seen this as well in, in various other online events and so on, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter who you are. You, in fact, you can change your appearance. You can, even in, you know, in, uh, on, on business conference calls now with clients and so on, often I'll never actually see the other person's face. Sometimes I might not even hear them. So the concept of who that person is, you know, down to, you know, their sort of physical attributes and who they are um, is almost going to become completely separated from what they do or what their purpose is in that digital space. Um, and, I, and I'd imagine, especially with more and more people being, you know, kind of coming into this space, it's probably going to really go in this direction a whole lot more where identities and digital identities will just live separately. Yeah, I mean, I think we already live separate, separately with our digital identities. I mean, no one, well, very few people are the people that are on Instagram. You know, <laughs> or like, well, I, That's a brilliant like, example. Mm. I mean, TikTok is more authentic in its approach and more real, but, you know, you still, everybody is wearing a mask. You know, and I think the identity in these new virtual worlds will be like uh, your super ego, you know, and you can be whoever you want. And I think that's the freedom. But you must also realize that, you know, digitizing all these material things. So if like a Louis Vuitton bag has got the same value in the digital realm, you know, think about how we value materialistic things. You know, today we're buying different fast fashion items and, you know, polluting the world with different things. And we're moving towards being minimalists and using less stuff, you know, but we still want to flex to the rest of the world, you know. So that yeah. blue tick, for example, could be an avatar of yourself, you know, that represents something or like the guys using those crypto punk NFTs as their picture, you know, represents that they belong to the crypto punk community, that, you know, they have a certain level of money because they can afford a, a, a JPEG that is worth a million dollars or whatever. You know, it kind of changes the whole dynamic of how we... Yeah are as human beings and how we consume and you know so i think like it'll push people to i don't know be more if that makes sense you know because when you're not when you when you can hide behind a mask you can do a lot more i know it's not ideal but it's almost like you can be anybody and in that virtual mm -hmm. sense one minute you can be this G.I. Joe, like trying to save the world, and the next you can be this person doing a, a, a conference online in this virtual world, and then you attend. There's just so much in the space, you know, yeah. so it's difficult to, to say exactly how we will evolve as human beings. Yeah, yeah, of especially course. our identities. I'd imagine it will also um, put a premium on things that do stay in the physical world because as more and more of this gets moved into virtual experiences which is obviously where it's going where it has been going then the kinds of things that are more difficult to replicate in a virtual space like for example personal interaction you know physical interaction between people there's still something there that you know others might crave that you want that you need um 
you'll probably find that those almost become incredibly commodified um, as as time goes by. Uh, but I suppose that's yeah, that's something that we'll have to keep an eye on. Uh, so l- l- last l- last question for me: Do, um, Are there uh, are there any things at the moment that that's kind of catching your eye in terms of how you're um, how you're sort of you know navigating the crypto space? Are you what are you excited about at the moment? If there's sort of one example or one thing in particular, oh, there's so many. You know, once you once you take that pull, you know, there's no coming back. You know, it's like you start to see the possibilities of this technology and you you almost become an advocate for it because it's 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 so powerful because it it for me by playing in this game and partaking in this space it's almost like i'm contributing to a better world you know because mm. there's a a lot of unbanked people in the world there's a lot of people that don't have access to the things we might have access to. And this levels out the playing field, you know, and that's what I like about it. So just for that reason, just to to help move this technology forward and reach adoption, I, I take part in it. From an excitement point of view is like, I think within the next five years, will be interacting with the blockchain one way or another without, you might not even know that you're doing it. Yeah. But also, I think it's going to, it's going to really highlight solutions that a lot of us are depressed about. You know, we're depressed about the environment, the environmental impact that, that mm. you know, global industry has on, on the planet. We depressed about the disparity between the rich and the poor. You know, we there's so many issues that face us. And I'm not saying blockchain will magically solve these, but it really tackles these issues at the heart of things, you know. And a big part of this greed that governments and organization has, you know, this like old way of doing things just doesn't mm. work anymore mm. you know like it's we young the, the younger generation don't want to work like this you know they they want to control their own finances they want to control their own lives they want to control themselves you know they want to work within a system but they, they just feel the system is unfair and that's mm. why bitcoin was born you know and this blockchain technology was born it was born out of the the housing crisis in 2008, you know, where the banks and these places got bailed out while many, many people lost a lot of money. And, you know, that's where technology gets born out of frustration and an mm. absolute need to change something. And it just so happens to be blockchain and crypto. And it's an amazing change. And I think if you're not part of it you're doing yourself a disservice because like you you're gonna you're just gonna slow yourself down whether you're a person or a business you know this technology can really really help you wonderful man wow it's it's been amazing to talk to you and to get um i think also some of the listeners must have yeah received a, a proper education there on some of the things that you've you've gone through um but uh, yeah, I, I certainly have appreciated your time and good to get enlightened about some of these things, even if it's often some of the things that we, we sort of know about or hear about, sometimes just having uh, it reintroduced or redefined again and again helps to really, not only for you to understand it on a technical level, but to really see the application of it on an everyday basis, which is, you know, which is where the money is, so to speak. <laughs> so... Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I really if you appreciate. You understand it. it you if you understand it, you you'll see. I guarantee you, you. Anyone looking into into this will find something of interest in what they do, one way mm. or another. Whether you're creative or a business person or you know something in between, you will find something to relate to with this technology, and it will be an advantage. Yeah, well, it's only becoming bigger and more differentiated. And as a result, safer and more secure and more able. 
So uh, yeah, I think I think the sky's the limit. Yeah, Let's there's a lot happens. of smart people working in the space. You know, a mm. lot of smart people, and we shouldn't underestimate how quickly this technology can be adopted. And just to just to paint a picture, blockchain is being adopted twice as fast as the internet has been as was adopted. Wow. So what took us 20 years to get here will take blockchain half the time. Yeah. So it's and something it's really well on its way. And, and w- the way we use the internet now, you know, we, it's like second nature to us. Mm. Like we can't live without the internet. And the same mm. will be applied to blockchain. You will not be able to live without doing something on the blockchain. Mm. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Exciting. And I think it becomes more exciting the more you learn about it. That's why the education element is just so important. Yeah. So hopefully that becomes clearer and, and easier to do um, yeah, you know, as will. time goes think, by. I'm sure it will. Yeah, I think it will. I mean, there's every, well, most of the crypto companies that are, or exchanges have uh, training material and, you know, a lot of great uh, courses to just brush up on what the space is about, you know. And mm. there's also a lot of good stuff on online as well to just to educate yourself with. I mean, you've got to continually upskill yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah on anything. Yeah, <laughs> on everything. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent, yeah, thanks again for your time. I hope uh, you'll no, jump on again at some point on the humble pie. And yeah, uh, yeah, time, yeah. Looking Maybe we should to revisit the cryptocurrency chat in a year's time and see how much it's changed. Absolutely, a part two. We'll, yeah. we'll probably need uh, more, more than 45 minutes to cover that update. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> cool, thanks. No, cool, man. Thanks for having me and I hope, uh, I hope your audience definitely learned something and that they use it for their advantage. You know? Thank you.